Doctor, I'm a male person who've had problems with my urine. Is this prostate cancer? Now, if you're male with a family history of prostate cancer, whether in your dad, uncle or brother, and you're over the age of 40, then you need to be watching this video. Well, this is something to consider as symptoms such as difficulty passing urine, peeing more than usual, feeling the need to go to pee again just after you've been to the toilet, and waking up a few times at night to pee can all be symptoms of prostate cancer, but can also be symptoms of other conditions such as bladder cancer, bladder or kidney infection, kidney stones, enlarged prostate and infection of the prostate known as prostatitis. For instance, blood in the urine can be the only presenting symptom of prostate cancer, but with other conditions, they usually tend to present with other symptoms. So for kidney infections, you expect to have back pain, fever and vomiting. So for kidney stones, again, lower back pain, increased urine frequency and passing small amounts of urine. For prostatitis, you might experience pain on sitting down, pain on passing urine, fever and increased frequency of urine both day and night. So apart from blood in the urine, what are the other symptoms of prostate cancer? So you might expect to see blood in the semen, erectile dysfunction, which is problems getting erection during sex, difficulty passing urine, you might notice that your urine is not flowing as well as it used to, waking up to urinate a few times at night and not emptying completely where you feel you need to go within a short period of time. Later symptoms of prostate cancer can be back pain, bone pain, feeling fatigued and weight loss. So as you can see, symptoms of prostate cancer can overlap with other conditions, which is why you need to have further tests to know if this is prostate cancer or something else. So you might not always have the obvious prostate cancer symptoms, as usually the cancerous cells tend to grow from the side of the prostate, therefore it's not pressing on the bladder, which is what you'd expect when you have typical symptoms such as when you have an enlarged prostate because these cells tend to enlarge from the middle of the prostate with enlarged prostate. So your doctor, after taking the history, which includes family history of prostate cancer, especially in your dad, before the age of 60, your doctor would also examine your prostate. The prostate is a smooth, walnut-sized gland that lies between the penis and the bladder. And your doctor would usually use his gloved finger to go into your rectum to examine the prostate. And that is to feel if the prostate is small or enlarged, regular or irregular, is it smooth? And then based on this, your doctor would want to send you for a prostate scan to check is this an enlarged prostate gland, as well as doing a blood test called the PSA test, which is the prostate specific antigen. And this is a protein that is naturally produced from the prostate gland. If the PSA is raised above the normal value for your age, your doctor might want to recheck the test in a few weeks. And this is because you might have a falsely raised PSA due to other reasons such as strenuous exercise, vigorous sexual activities, cycling, as when you sit on a saddle, it stimulates the release of the PSA from the prostate gland, especially if all this takes place within a 48 hour period. But if you have an enlarged prostate, you've had a recent urinary tract infection or prostatitis. However, if your doctor strongly suspects that based on the symptoms history and examination, as this sounds like prostate cancer, because you could still have a normal PSA with prostate cancer, or if your PSA blood test came back as super high, whether in its thousands, or higher than it should be for your age, then you really need to have further tests done, such as an MRI of your prostate and a prostate biopsy. Now an MRI is more detailed and accurate than having an ultrasound of the prostate, and a prostate biopsy would usually involve using a thin long needle to collect samples of tissue from the prostate gland which are then analysed in a lab looking for cancerous cells. Now in terms of treatment, this depends on the type of prostate cancer as you have slow growing prostate cancer and you've got fast aggressive prostate cancer. With the slow growing prostate cancer, treatment is not usually necessary and you're usually monitored regularly along with having three to six monthly PSA blood tests. And if the PSA tests are rising, then your urologist would usually consider if treatment is needed. Now fast aggressive prostate cancers need treatment as it's more likely to spread to other parts of your body such as your bones. So if you're someone who's getting rib pains, back pains, chest pains for no obvious reason, then your doctor should be doing a PSA test especially if you're over the age of 40. Now I will not go into treatments in detail but this can involve a combination of treatments including surgery to remove the prostate. So you've got radiotherapy, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy and other new therapies that can now target the cancer specifically without the side effects that you would get from doing surgery or chemotherapy. For example, surgery can cause erectile dysfunction, while chemo can cause hair loss, fatigue, diarrhea, brain fog, and other undesirable side effects. So how do I prevent prostate cancer? 
where you have what I call modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Your non-modifiable risk factors are having a family history of prostate cancer, having a genetic mutation in your prostate gland, being black. The stats have shown that one in four black people will have prostate cancer over their lifetime, as well as increasing age. So these are risk factors that you cannot modify or change. Now your modifiable risk factors include poor diet, smoking, drinking alcohol, exposure to chemicals such as pesticides. So what you want to do is avoid these risk factors. You want to eat more fresh fruit, eat less red and processed meat, avoid exposure to pesticides, stop smoking, avoid drinking excess alcohol and do exercise. Do you know that while the West has the highest rate of prostate cancer, Japan has the lowest risk of prostate cancer? Now I'll leave you to find out why. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and share this to all men that need to know more about the prostate and the importance of doing checks for the prostate to make sure that they're not at risk of having prostate cancer.